Now, besides the single page TIFF images, I also have two text files. The first one we're going to look at is the DAT file or the DAT file. The DAT file is the concordance default naming format for a delimited text file. DAT files contain the metadata of the documents that we want to review. Let's briefly go back to the original built database so that we can have a better look at the fields. All these fields here, the author, the date, the body of the document, etc., are all placed into this single DAT file. The DAT file, you'll notice, while being a text file, contains quite a bit of gibberish characters. These characters are the default concordance delimiters. They are what identify the various field separations between the metadata tags. Now, the delimited text format is very crucial to the understanding of concordance. So let's spend a few minutes going over what exactly a delimited text is. In a typical database, there are fields of information. Let's open up a Excel document as an example. Excel is a spreadsheet program. And spreadsheets are really the very fundamental building blocks of uh, databases. And since the information is only stuck into one single table, it's much easier to explain with, it, with Excel than a full-blown database. Now, in an Excel spreadsheet, you have rows of information. Row 1 here, you can see, you have the information for a single record, the start page, the end page, the date, document type, etc. And when all the fields have been described, a new record begins in the next row, and so on, and so on. In the data file, you can see the same thing. Row 1 contains the field names of the data. Row 1 is one single record, the start page, the end page, date, document type, etc. And when all the metadata fields are shown for that first record, a new record of information begins on the next row, then the next, and the next, and the next, etc., just like within the Excel spreadsheet. Now, besides the rows of data, it is obvious in Excel and in databases that there are also columns of information. In Excel, everything in column A is the start page. This cell here is the start page of record 1, this is the start page of record 2, and this is the start page of record 3, 4, and so on. Column B is the end page of record 1, then 2, 3, 4, and so on and then the next column, and then the next column, and so on and so forth, until all the column information is shown. Now, here's where the delimiters actually come in. Obviously, it's very easy to identify the start of a row in either a program like Excel or a simple text file like the stat file. Each line is a new row. This is pretty straightforward, because as long as the data is on the same row, it is part of the same record. But what about the column information? In Excel, we can see that a piece of data is in a particular column simply by looking at the lines that identify each box. When we click on the header, we can see that everything highlighted is a column. But what about inside a text file? Before data can be placed into concordance or Excel or Access or any database for that matter, there needs to be a way for the computer to identify where the column information begins and where it ends. That's where the delimiters come in. Delimiters can be any text character. The most common delimiters you'll see out of something like Excel is the comma and quote. The delimiters serve as a way for the computer software to identify where a new column of information begins and where it ends. Chances are you've seen a similarly formatted file, just like the CSV file that we've got open. This file uses the basic commas and quotes as delimiters. Here the quotes tell the software that everything within these two quotes belong together in one single field. And the comma tells the software that a new separate field is coming up next. So the software basically reads this data as start new field here, end this field, ready for next field. Next field information then starts here, field information ends here, ready for next field. Next field information starts here, field information ends here, ready for next field, and so on. This is a way for the database to know which piece of text should go where. 
Now, like I said, delimiters can be any text character. So it is entirely possible to go ahead and make use of this file to load into Excel or concordance, but I wouldn't recommend it. While delimiters can be any character, you should always try to stick with concordance default, or if you are using summation, stick with summation defaults. The reason being that while the quotes or commas may work for numbered fields, they tend to run into problems with paragraph fields. Meaning, for instance, what if the metadata field you are trying to import already contains commas or quotes? Say, for instance, you are trying to import text information taken from a letter. Commas and quotes may be used throughout the entire letter, which then would cause the software or program to mistake the text that should go into one single paragraph field to be broken up into several different fields of information. It is for this reason that common characters like the comma and quote are not recommended. Now you'll also find some new vendors to the litigation support industry will try to substitute with what they believe to be less common characters for delimiters. For instance, they might use the caret symbol or the line bar. And while these characters are not as prevalent as the commas or quotes, you will eventually run into documents where they do appear in the text. Chances are, if it's a character that's visible on your keyboard, you will eventually encounter them within your review documents. In fact, I once ran into a service provider who attempted to give me a file with the at symbol as a delimiter. Obviously, any email or web addresses will automatically be split into multiple fields. So try to save yourself the trouble now and always stick with the default delimiters. You'll avoid a whole lot of headaches later on. Now the concordance defaults are these strange characters here. Concordance itself provides you with the ASCII codes that you can use to bring up these commas. So these are the numbers you want to provide to the vendors when they're asking what delimiters you want to use. For concordance, use 020 for commas, 254 for a quote, and 174 for a new line character. Now with all that in mind, you can see that while the DAT file may look a bit cluttered and messy, it actually is a very well-organized list of metadata fields that will eventually go into your concordance database. We can see that this symbol here, which looks kind of like a section symbol, simply declares where the beginning of the field and the ending of the fields are. Then this symbol that resembles a paragraph character signifies that a new field is about to begin. So we have start new field data, field data ends, ready for next field, new field data begins, field data ends, ready for next field, etc. Also, you want to keep in mind that these are not the section or paragraph symbols. They simply look like it on the screen. Depending on the program or text editor that you are using to view these data files, the section and paragraph symbols may appear differently. So this is basically what a DAT file consists of. It's a plain text file that holds all the coded information of your documents or the metadata information from your electronic documents. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at the other text file that should have been provided to you by your vendor, which is the image load file.